Hello everyone, this is the Great Pumpkin speaking and welcome to this new PvP video about Dragon Fable. So this time we're, uh, we're up at uh, the streak of 4 and now we'll be uh, resuming our challenge with the same rule as usual. This time I'm going to be going as a ranger and this is a really special occasion in that this is one of the first time that I actually have to record this after, after the fact as it is because I actually lost the audio for this particular recording, so in the spirit of fairness, I'm re-recording it over it. So yeah, there I was talking about uh, the fact that I actually managed to obtain my ultimate uh, Light of Destiny, which is actually pretty cool. It took me a while to actually get it, and one of the other things I've been working on is actually getting the... Uh, mage version of both the Doom and Destiny weapon, which I've actually managed to get. That means that pretty soon I'll actually be able to change class. All I really need is getting some new weapons, which should come in fairly quickly. So that is good. One of the nice things about this battle is that first we're against Sir Travis, an evolved dragon lord, which is fairly rare. I recorded this somewhere around Sunday night, so we'll see some different people than from what we usually do. The problem was, it had been quite a while since I last played the Ranger. It was actually before the, the challenge of those streaks, so I actually got to heal between fights. So, between this and the fact that I kind of forgot how to play it, that made this rather challenging. Still, mostly playing the Ranger is pretty easy. All you gotta do is actually layer the various uh, stacks of Viper in order to increase your focus till you end up getting free attacks. The rest is all about really increasing your uh, your critical rate. One of the things there is that I actually missed his stun. I got really lucky to actually avoid it. And using Sky was a terrible idea because I was actually looking for the one that did uh, two critical, which was pretty bad actually. <laughs> oh well, things happen. Anyhow, so next we're gonna use Spotter. Or we're not. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we did a flashbang to attempt to immobilize him, but I'm pretty sure it didn't work. Uh, there we go, a good purge. Not nearly as much damage as I would have liked, and the problem with it, as I started realizing, was because the ultimate blinding light of destiny is actually a holy elemental weapon. Or rather, a light elemental weapon. And the fact that every, this guy is really resistant to it means that I'm not really dealing much damage at all, really. Yeah, here I was wondering what to use. I had completely forgotten that power shot was actually a good move. <laughs> as well as Spotter. But the fun thing there is that this Hawk actually managed to heal me a bunch. That's actually one of the few things that could actually save me. We still have four battles to go after this. So, gotta make the most of it, right? Ah, oh, come on. Potion bottles don't grow on trees, man. So a lot of Dragonlord and Doom Knights lately. Kinda bothers me. Of course they're a really popular class, so I guess that can be help. And bam! Just like that. Next match. Okay, so we're up against another Dragonlord. Aptly called Dragonlord. <laughs> oh well. I think this was actually the guy that uh, had the most resistance out of all of those I had. I did nearly do no damage against this guy at all. He had a good fire weapon too. All in all, the, those Death Knight equipments are actually a fairly good way to get good gear really quickly. Although it requires some dedication after doing all of the farming for the Doom weapons and such, you'd think that people would get tired of running those same missions over and over. Uh, still, gotta do them, right? You gotta be the very best. Hmm. 
Among others, one of the things that I want to do soon is to actually showcase the various quests involved in actually getting the Doom and Destiny weapons. I'll try to make a montage for you guys, show you what was involved. <laughs> that took actually about two seasons of Gotham to actually finish all of it, so... <laughs> uh, that took forever. I mostly did that during the evening. I actually felt that getting to the max level was actually much harder than it. That's really slow. You can kind of see that uh, the Ranger is a class that builds up over time. Although when you use proper weapon, that makes things a lot easier. And there I actually found out that he had good resistance against light. Now I'm actually doing some damage for a change. Yeah, not bad. Still haven't changed my pet yet, I'm still waiting on suggestion for that. Still, with Mugloween being right around the corner, this might be an opportunity for me to pick up something nice. That's probably what I'll be focusing on from now on, seeing as uh, switching my class is pretty much done. And bam! Okay, we're up against Dax, who has a really crappy weapon, <laughs> so that should go pretty quickly. I actually don't deal nearly as much damage against him as I should, and my mana is running really low all of a sudden. It's rather mana intensive as far as the class goes, which is a little surprising, to be honest. I kinda wish they designed new arenas for PvP. Been watching the same one over and over, although I suppose they would get old eventually. Still, they could reuse things like, I don't know, the dragon fighting arena among other ones. Although, given that they are made for giant sprites, I suppose that's not really an option. We'll get there. Kind of like what they did with this class's animations, among others, it was the fact that uh, I remember what the warrior class actually looked like in the beginning, and I gotta say it's a lot fancier than it used to be. Sometimes when you look at some of the old animations, for instance from the Adventure Quest, which was the first game before this one, uh, you see that they've made uh, progress by leaps and bounds. It's only gotta get better, actually. Right now they're working on Adventure Quest 3D, which is their next game, which is actually an MMORPG, which will, uh, of course, push game mechanics among, uh, I mean, uh, playing as a team as it is. So, that seems rather interesting, although I'm not sure I wanna invest uh, things into another game like that. I would like to do Adventure Quest at some point, but I'm not even sure I could stomach AQ World, though. Anyhow, we're up against Riku, a Doom Knight, which is pretty much a guaranteed win, to be honest. And this guy has a pretty nice, neat pet. Although pretty much everyone has resistance to darkness except maybe me, so... Not much we can do about that. And there we go. My stun failed, so... Not much you can do about that. Rather, it's not that it that it failed it because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> uh, history repeats itself. We're getting there. I actually didn't take as much damage from this as I would have expected. Although the fact that the cooldown on the Hawk is actually global and lasts across battle, that makes it a little difficult. Still, 
it can still be handled. So there we're up against Aragon, who's a Frostmoglion warrior or something like that. So yeah, that guy was actually pretty tough with the amount of health that I had. Still, I think we can take we can take him. There was ever a time to put that uh, epic music. Now was the time. I'm always not sure about what kind of gear I should get. I think I wear equipment that's good, although I not no, don't really know what's the bleeding edge stuff that I can actually get. This guy has got the old uh, Doom something wing, which are actually rather powerful as far as stats go. Although I'm not sure if it's the best that you can actually get. Even though he's level 80, I'm tempted to believe that's not the Kogis. He does a ton of damage too. It's a good thing I put up my shield. Wow. He actually does seem to be running out of steam after a while. Although it's gonna be a close one. That thing I honestly thought it would end me. I don't really know much about that class. Some things that I've been finding out lately, some class I know next to nothing about. Ooh, there's our pal Twig. We just had a giant sugar rush. Or was that Twig? Yeah, it was. Oof, got really lucky there. Three turns stun, and I couldn't have handled it. Talk about lucky, huh? Well, I think that's about it for him. Yep, bonus attack. Awesome. So this time we'll be going as a dragon warrior, and I've just realized that I forgot to equip my back at him. I felt like something was missing there. With this, we'll try to do some day to make things a little interesting, since a Rift Walker would be too easy anyway. I've also realized that we're actually at a streak of 3, the last one was a streak of 2 if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, I don't I never got as high as a streak of 5. It happened in the past, not in this case. And we're up against Sepulchre, the Doom Knight, who is actually a reference to the main villain of Book 1. Still, that should be pretty easy for us. Assuming they don't get lucky, Doom Knights have gotten lucky against me a lot lately. I've also strangely have managed to get a few uh, version 1 Doom Knights, which was a real treat. I wish I could I would see more of those. Although I suppose it's kind of a limited item. One of the strange thing about this class is that I actually didn't remember that the Critical attack actually did two hits, I thought it only did one. I might be misremembering things though. The thing is, I think I've mentioned it before, uh, the dragon versions of the base class were actually supposed to be a little more powerful than the regular version, and unfortunately that's just not happening right now. I'm thinking they're gonna release an artifact or something at some point to fix that, but meh. And there's Serenus Norn, another Doom Knight, whom we've seen quite a few times up until now. Still, not much opportunity to showcase this last fall. I get our Doom Knights and I have to conserve my strength. Although I suppose I could still attack, this class isn't very mana intensive unlike the Rift Walker. 
actually swap my stats recently to actually try to get more mana. There's actually uh, about 150 strength on this character now as opposed to the old 200. So I've mostly max endurance and gotten some wisdom in. We're not doing too badly. And bam. Up against Nevin, another Doom Knight. I must be cursed or something. Still, I got the opportunity to spice it up a bit. It's not my fault if I get crappy encounters. See, right there, two hits. Strangely enough, I didn't do that much more damage in the double attack. Now that I'm noticing this, that's actually pretty strange. Although I do have a rather good crit rating as it is. Awesome. Next one against Max, a rogue with a really crappy weapon. He does have that cool sneeve mode, so that's good. Whee! Makes for a bit of a one-sided fight. Man, that took forever. Can actually kind of see how the various uh, graphics have improved over time. When you look at those gorilla and uh, below over there, you can see that uh, it wasn't quite the same. It actually kind of looks closer to what Adventure Quest looked like back in the days, although it's still a tiny bit better. Even at the start, this game was actually pretty impressive, as far as graphics went, and as far as browser RPGs go, I suppose. And we're up against Pedro Fire. Okay, that's actually looking pretty cool. I don't see that helmet very often. Although that weapon, though. That helmet might have been a store weapon, but I'm not so sure anymore. Still another Doom Knight, though. So much for trying to spice it up, huh? Still, we might get lucky. Yep, he did get lucky. Won't do him much good at this point, though. Although it can deal about as much as 1k damage, so that's actually pretty darn impressive. I'm not even sure what determines that. Yeah, I mean, is it luck? Does it depend on darkness resistance or something? I don't know. We 
Weird thing is he actually managed to get one of those shadow dots on me. And bam, that's over for this guy. Freak of four. Okay, so this time we're going to be going as a Master Soul Weaver and using silver weapons for a change. That actually makes for a pretty cool looking weapon using the Master Soul Weaver versions at least. So that's pretty cool. So this guy, he's not actually a fairly decent weapon for a Dragon Warrior that is. So that should make something slightly interesting. The nice thing about this is that he's actually using the Pride Lord pet who used to be one of the strongest pets in the game at one point in time, at least as far as I can remember. There's also a Doom version of this one, whereas uh, this pet is actually wearing some sort of, uh, shall we say, Doom Knight armor. I don't know, the thing about it, that could make a, for a pretty decent pet. I do have some dragon coins laying, lying around. Hmm. I'll think about it. Not nearly as powerful as the uh, Soul Weaver with the Belte 11 tail, although the Master Soul Weaver does have things that goes well for it, namely as usually having tools that uh, answers most situations, although I suppose the Soul Weaver does have that to a degree. Anyhow, we can probably finish him just by calling Aegis. Or, well, nearly there. Hmm. I was actually looking for that uh, two-hit swords that you actually get with the regular Soul Weaver, but you don't have it with the Master one. So I just ended up... Eh. So where I got something against Wolf DDMC who is a well-known figure on the Dragon Fable forums, if I'm not mistaken. That should be interesting, given that he's a Riff Walker as well, so... A bit low on mana, though. I'm surprised he's not max level, actually. Still, that should curb much of his offensive, given that I use my shield. The reason I actually do this without unleashing Aegis is that I actually improves my bonus if I'm not mistaken as well as other things so I'm more accurate among other things using burst to actually increase my damage he's also getting mana burn I'm not sure I think it's the burst that does that at that point I figured stunning him was the Best policy, at least, to somewhat nullify his combo, such as it is. It also gives me time to deplete his mana somewhat. I don't really usually bother actually getting silver weapons, although with the beating Seofrob in the Elemental Chaos Challenge, you don't really have much of a choice, because at some point he heals so fast. Although I found the fight to be a little easier after doing it a few times. Maybe it's because it was actually a bug in the fight or something. I'm thinking maybe it thought Tino was still alive and ended up healing him. I know at some point I managed to get uh, the Necromancer kind of into a loop where he couldn't kill me, but uh, I couldn't kill him either, so not much that could be done there. So I just decided to go ahead and get rid of him. It's weird that little transformation that he just does. I wonder if it's actually gender based or it just happens to be that way. Anyway, we're up against me there, the Doom Knight, which is a nice reference to my Final Fantasy Alexander storyline series. Another one of the arenas that could use some spicing up.
Yep, talk about bumlock, huh? <laughs> I don't think I'll really manage to make it past that. Well, I'm kind of faking, faking it. I actually know what are gonna happen. I didn't find something though. By using purge like this, I actually managed to get rid of that dot, which is actually pretty helpful. And just use an E just to avoid the less hit. That sneeze and pet is actually pretty cool. Awesome. Next one. Oh, we're up against Bob again, the rune in shadow from YouTube. So yep, you should do a number against us. Being a Technomancer is actually isn't really good for my streak. <laughs> Even managed to stun me on this too. Oh no, that wasn't the one. Hmm. I must be misremembering things. It is a really great thematic pet though. A little on the weak side perhaps. Still, not a lot that's actually weak to metal. I actually didn't think he would pull it off that early. So yep, I ended up with no mana. And strangely enough, the Master of Soul Weavers got me covered. So I actually get a little mana to help me out. And given the fact that he's gonna keep hitting himself, well, not necessarily a bad thing. I'm actually amazed that bug remaining game for so long, it's so obvious. Probably just something that in the game programming will just make everything else a nightmare, I suppose. Though it doesn't seem that difficult, does it? Uh, I think that's the one. Yep, got Sonic Blasted. It's really self-defeating. At least change the AI so they don't use it. Makes sense, there aren't uh, many enemies against them anyway. Bam. Not a lot of health. Let's hope we can somehow make it. Hmm. Peculiar choice on my part. Probably thought that I wanted to conserve my HP somewhat. Sounds like it paid off too. Or well, not as much as I would have liked, but still close enough. And yet he killed himself. <laughs> Sorry, man. And now we're up against Ryu Senpu, who will proceed to completely destroy us. <laughs> we have <laughs> no help. There's absolutely nothing we can do against this guy. He's a time archivist, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that. Don't really know much about that class, to be honest. Whoa. Even got that mini mini phage, who actually steals mana, which means I have literally no chance against him. Whoa. That was cool, man. So I get to use some of his moves? I'm not actually sure what that mechanism does, really. But anyway, it ends up starting everything all at once. It was actually a bad choice to use that one. Still. Although I suppose it does damage him. And yet somehow we kinda got stuck because I ended up <laughs> actually restarting the battle using that ability. So yeah, that's really good for me. That actually gave me a shot at beating him. Okay, might have gotten defeated, but hey. If it's a win, I'll take it. First, for the damage boost. Bam. The 
big doom thing with the uh, was it the darkness dracolich or something nah close enough I actually don't know anything about that class it does seem rather bursty anything to sell calendars I suppose because most of the time classes are actually given as part of buying calendars yearly from uh, Arctic's Entertainment. That's kind of their way to make money, I suppose. Among other things. <laughs> and I got defeated. Just like that. <laughs> oh well. Well, I'm afraid that's going to be it for the time being. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you like what you're seeing, leave a comment. Please subscribe. And bye-bye.